with Tomas. Okay, we are recording now, and you all should uh, agree to that. So thank you for joining here Thursday, the 13th of July, 2023, the Supply Chain and Trade Finance uh, SIG for Hyperledger. And today we're going to do more ebook planning. We also have this planned for the end of July before we uh, take a hiatus, at least for scheduled meetings during the month of August. And I guess, you know, I'll just say it out loud here. I mean, we had a goal at the end of June, you know, it would have been ideal if we had hit that, but I think we're, we, the good news is we're, get, we're getting more submissions from people in the last week or so. All of a sudden there was a flurry of activity, including a, uh, Mark Ram Ramelovich from uh, Oracle was to send some good and we'll kind of cover that in a little bit. So that's, um, so it's great that Ned, you're here, Jeff, you're here, David, you're here, as well as the rest of uh, the usual gang so, uh, with things. So since we're talking here, Hyperledger, all are welcome, all opinions, all thoughts, all ideas, I mean, you know the story there. And please don't share anything that's uh, from an antitrust policy. Please don't share anything that is confidential that you don't want out in public here. Uh, let's see, summer break I mentioned, no SIG meeting in August. Also, uh, earlier this week, there was a co-chair uh, or chair uh, SIG me meeting uh, hosted by the Hyperledger folks. And it turns out there's going to be a new Hyperledger marketing logo and theme, kind of basically the whole website's gonna change a little bit. Um, and so they wanted to update the logo. I guess it's been seven years and they thought, okay, we need to have something a little bit cooler, newer, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if you go on to Hyper, I checked about an hour or so ago and it's still the same. Uh, their goal is by the 17th is to get this initially out. And eventually our wiki page will change a little bit on all that kind of stuff. And it's going to roll out over time. Uh, Did there. they give you a JPEG or something that you can show us? Uh, they did not give me <laughs> a uh, JPEG. Just ask me. So, Who's they? Was, it, um, they is, Daniela and David. Uh, ben, Thompson. Okay. ben Thompson is the marketing person. He says he's been working on it six to eight months uh, for Hyperledger. Hmm. I, I, it, full disclosure, it, it, it didn't strike me as, oh, I love this <laughs> um, when, I, when I saw it um, in the mm -hmm. charts. But you know, it's one of those things. It'll probably be fine. I'm kind of, I kind of like the colors and you know the graphic as it is right now. Um, you know, remember Andrea when we were merging the supply chain and trade finance? We we had to come up with a new uh, logo for our group, and you know, I kind of like that one. So, anyways, it was dude, it's perfect. Yeah, it was. It was very. It was very green and shades of green is uh, is what it was turning into. So, okay, okay. cool. Like, I mean, I mean, if you think so, so um, what's that? Yeah, it's green. You said it perfectly. And since the merger of the two six, we've been touching on sustainability, ESG. So that was a good choice indeed. Yeah. So I'm did I just refreshing here right now? No, nope. it's still still the same. So, anyways, um, so that that's kind of the. Big news, uh, I guess, from a Hyperledger perspective uh, out there. I also have, um, I think I'll put it out there. Uh, Daniela had, um, has been doing a series of presentations, I guess, going around to different uh, SIGs. Um, we haven't asked her to talk since earlier this year, um, but I'll, maybe I'll put that presentation link out on uh on our wiki so people can take a look at, you know, what the latest and greatest thoughts are from her. So there you go. Uh, discussion. So she, um, go what, ahead, Jeff. Just anybody in the phone. What is Danielle's role? She is, uh, she employed by Linux Foundation? Is she work somewhere else? Does she, what does she do? I, I know, I mean, uh, I should say, I know what she does, but what's her role? Good, good, I mean, good is she full time? Question. Good question. She is, she, David Boswell, are both full-time employees of, well, I guess, probably the Linux Foundation response, okay. working on hyperledger.org, okay. the, found, the foundation that is Hyperledger. Okay. So that- Her so, title then, on LinkedIn is general manager, blockchain and identity and hyperledger. And if she's, and if she's doing anything else, 
it's news to me. I've never heard her doing anything else. Yeah. In the okay. three to four years that I've I've been uh, working with this, so I mean, it's not like they got a huge team. There's mm -hmm. probably there's Daniela, and there's probably three or four other people I think that are that are full time employees. Tomas is a contractor, from what I can tell. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. You know, he, he's doing full time it. work, but yeah. he's not a full time employee. So she's there to help us then, our SIG. To give Absolutely. Us Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So, you know, we can ask things. They might not always be able to do it, but they, they can, we can ask things of them. Well, if we donate money, they'll do it. Pardon? <laughs> so we give her 10, 10 grand, the Linux Foundation, they'll. Yeah, they'll be very happy. Well, that's probably yeah. small. That's probably small. Yeah. <laughs> the, their big thing is they want corporate members to be joining up. I mean, kind of twofold big picture thing is they want corporate members to join up and pay yeah. pay fees, right? Well, I like that. Oh, no, and then the I'm other sorry. is co is, co is code contributions, right? Yeah, so I looked at the I looked at the organization. What's their revenue? Ten billion, the Linux Foundation. 10 I billion? 10, I, I looked out there, the Linux Foundation, yeah, 830,000 programmers or something. That's um, associated that's with probably, Linux. Yeah. That's for Linux, Linux Foundation overall. Yeah. And uh, I imagine that Hyperledger is kind of run as a discrete entity. And I haven't look at, looked at their 501c3 recently or at their um, 990. Yeah, they but have that it on one of their websites. Might show. 830 yeah. some thousand uh, people related to his programming, 53,000 lines of code a day, something like that, and 10, I think 10 billion in revenue. Mm -hmm. I wonder I, if they consider everyone participating in any way as coders. Yeah. Because oh, I, I'm not. That, that, I, that I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't deliver code. I'm not. Yeah. 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 So okay. for purposes, We're contributing, purposes but not of us, that. good question, Jeff. You know, we we can ask them to help us out in okay. what we're trying to do here. And, you know, I guess the sky's the limit. And the worst thing that will happen is they'll say, no, <laughs> can't do it. Right. <laughs> On it. So, uh, I mean, so you can dream a little bit, you, Ned, David, um, out there. Can't advertise okay. the Super Bowl. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Um, do you want to talk about Alicia biannual report real fast? Sure. Um, do you want to pull it up? So biannual report to do twice a year. Last year, uh, Tom submitted it mid-year. There wasn't one submitted for end of year, but we drafted one um, last week, earlier this week, and um, did the original draft. Tom added a few things, and we sent it in to David and Tomas yesterday. It is up on the WIC, if you want, overall health. You know, we've had several webinars. We're working on the ebook. Our LinkedIn page has grown for issues. Right now, most of us still have limited technical skills, and that's something we'd we'd like to we'd like to get more people in with more developing skills, so we can can contribute code as well. Um, some we've got more people joining regularly, asking how to contribute. So we want to create relevant opportunities for everyone. We really want to see more enterprise participation. Uh, the LinkedIn profile that Andrea has been running has, that's where most of our activity is seen, much more than Discord or, or Confluence. Um, Tom, Andrea, and I currently co-chairs. Eric stepped down earlier this year. Uh, we're working on that ebook. As of earlier this week, there were 31 projects that we'd considered. This week that changed a little bit. We'll go into that later. Um, 14 profiles have been submitted and they're now being edited. Uh, we'll be choosing those in the coming weeks. We've had four webinars um, from, you know, up to 14 live attendees to more than 200 viewers on YouTube. The, there's been 24 editions of that weekly news digest that Andrea puts so much work into and other people are welcome to post things to those pages as well. If you go to weekly news digest on the left hand side of the page, um, and the, the LinkedIn page has grown a lot. Our planned work 
I want to get some more additional use cases to demonstrate how hyperledger-based platforms are, are being used, how it's adding value to industry and adding value to the community, be doing more webinars. Uh, we still want to make the wiki page more engaging and a more inviting place, a more inviting resource. Part of that, I think, is going to be redoing the SIG scope. That's going to take a lot of conversation and we're really deciding what we want from the SIG and what that includes, uh, looking for opportunities to collaborate with the other SIGs. Another thing Hyperledger asked for is participant diversity, which we're working on. We need to get more women. We need to get more people of color. I'm thinking that once we start up again in the fall, I want to start posting meeting info, at least for the webinars to the women in blockchain, Slack groups, and other groups like that. Uh, we want to get more people with technical skills. We want to get a broader geographical range as well. And something we've talked about before, enterprise representation. We need people who are working in the enterprises to help us understand, better understand how the technology is being used and what the needs are. And we also included a thank you to Tomas and Daniela for suggesting that instead of doing a single in-depth case study, an ebook, which in some ways is, is a bit less work because we're we're including more companies, but a shorter amount of information. And then they also gave us a template to work with and some of the existing ebooks. And certainly a thank you to Jeff for being a new member of the SIG and doing so much work on the ebook. You've contributed more profiles than anybody else, and you're doing a lot on the editing. So thank you, Jeff. Sure. This, uh, you're looking for people that do technical work? Technical We'd work like work? to get more people involved who have the technical skills so that we can do more technical projects. Oh, okay. Well, at least, at least let me know what you aperture. want. At least I, open uh, the aperture, Jeff, on you know, what enterprises would like. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, God, I did that. I mean, I, I come out of uh, industry as a uh, senior design architect I, IT degree but okay I just want what your skills are, skill sets are they're looking for Python okay. Java those I could I do those but anyway right. you yeah. need something to, to look at um what enterprises I know what I know what enterprises are doing with them something else I'm doing with somebody else which I think mean, mm -hmm. just it's very small the website but I know what enterprises are doing I know what I know what the Federal Reserve is doing because they still do a small amount of work for the Federal Reserve in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is the I, Fed I, using I, Hyperledger? What's that? Is the Fed using Hyperledger? Uh, no. Uh, they're not doing anything. Okay. Um, they are, uh, well, they're, stra they're strategizing, but again, the Federal Reserve, when they start looking into crypto and they start looking at all kinds of stuff, they have to become involved on a world scale. They can't just, uh, because the dollar is a world currency, they can't flip and make a digital currency and not involve European banks, Asian banks. And so my role actually is to help them. One of the roles of the Federal Reserve Bank, they've got a charter beside owning mm -hmm. our, it's not money we have, owning our stock is, um, Big thanks for them from their big customers. And let's say you're a big steel company and you say people are starting to want us to uh, start using uh, Hyperledger Ethereum for um, through, through crypto purchases of our steel. How do we do this? And they go to Chase, BMO Harris, the name of the big bank of America. And they go, well, we don't know. So they go to the Federal Reserve and say, part of your job is to give us the strategy that we see upcoming around that. And the Federal Reserve says, I don't know. And so we have a team of people that help them strategize hey Jeff, around risks, things like that. Hey, Jeff, have you heard yeah. of something called RLNs, Regulated Liability Networks at all? Yes. Okay. Can Andrea ping you maybe uh, to discuss it? Because it came up on Monday on a call, uh, on, the, on the chair call, and I had never heard of them. And so the thought was, so Andrea is going to look into it, you know, what's, what would the benefit be or not benefit be in from a trade finance perspective? And yeah, we yeah. want to share I'm, that. I'm planning to get in yeah. touch with the VP and especially is going to be more useful than she mm -hmm. probably I'll try to do into Would we maybe want to have a webinar on that? Yeah, it would be worth to have educational one. for everybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. VPN. With VPN, we yeah. were the first one. 
okay. 2021 to launch a joint webinar in March 2021, Alicia. So it could be interesting. Okay. Yeah, so I think Andrea, September, you know, that could be a good way to come back from the summer here uh, with that. If you guys believe that, yes, there's value from a trade finance perspective on it. You know, we're not just... We're not just waving our hands, right? <laughs> or actually, you know, yeah. there's some value in a real world situation there. Jeff, you're smiling, man. <laughs> no, I, the stuff I do with the Fed, I can't say a whole lot because um, although it's stuff that we're doing actually leaked out in May and somebody stuck some stuff out there, but people are paranoid about crypto. People are Elon, Elon Musk must currency. have got involved or something. I don't know. <laughs> so... Um, the only thing I can say that's not out there yet is there's some new regulations proposed in the U.S. Congress to try and make the use of credit cards. Again, this is the government, so you know what's going to happen. Easier for people to use, which means it's going to cost people even more money. It's going to get more complex around credit cards. And then every time they do that, people start eyeballing, what is this crypto? Where there's no, there's just gas fees. So um, some okay. stuff's going on over there. But digital currency, a, a central digital dollar is right around the corner and in the US, the cost of using paper money is going to go up. So okay. if you, something if you put $20 in the bank, they're going to give you 18. That's something on the menu is $20. I run into this twice already just with credit cards where I've gone up in some event and said it's ten dollars if you use a credit card, it's twelve dollars if you pay cash. I wonder how that's going to affect regions like New York City, where it is illegal for companies to only accept cards. A local ice cream chain has mm -hmm. gotten fined a significant amount, thousands of dollars, because they only take cards. Yeah, some places have done that. And they'll, you can, they'll take paper. It's just going to cost money because the Federal Reserve is going to tell is telling so many people just use cars that they're saying it's $160 billion a year to, to manage currency, to print it, manage it, to ship mm -hmm. it around, so forth. People that use currency are going to start paying that, not credit card users. Credit card users, they are subsidizing that through their fees. So what they want to say is you're now going to pay to use cash. People can still say, I only accept cash, but when that entity you give 20 bucks to to buy a nice glass of wine they're gonna if it's cash they're gonna want 22 dollars because when they put it in the at 20 dollars in the bank if they don't charge that surcharge they're gonna be charged their, their deposit will be 18 dollars mm -hmm. you will pay for the cost of currency uh, right. it's all spread out today and so if you want to use currency go ahead but you'll have to pay for that okay Love you, i think really. one issue we'll <laughs> see emerging from that is how this affects the unbanked Yes. Yeah. People so, who are unbanked don't have cards. I think I kind of took us down a down a, down a path here. Anyways, <laughs> hey, all, sorry about that. No, no worries. No, thank no, you, no, thank you. No, Appreciate this, this those is, insights. I mean, and, and maybe you know, Andrea, if you think that this is a good, and Jeff, you think this is a good topic for us to go through. Um, you know, Ned and David, obviously, you guys can weigh in too um, here in September. You know that that might be something for us to focus on, and if Vimpin can uh, give us a little story on it, that'd be great. So let's do this. One other thing I wanted to say about the uh, activity report, Andrea, man, you've done great work on getting that LinkedIn page with you know almost four thousand followers on there. So thank you, Andrea. Um, pro probably. How about you? I don't know if that translates or not, but basically, you know. Thank you. You've done a lot of work and probably unsung, not a lot of recognition for it, but we're far and away, I think, beyond anybody else in terms of the number of followers for. Yeah, uh, who, yeah. yeah. I think the first one, given city figures, uh, yeah, six, going to have a meeting soon next week with uh, media and entertainment, sick, and going to, to explain how to do it what to do actually to to raise the um, the followers base so i mean it was uh it was i think it was thomas that put us in contact so good it's beneficial to expand the followers base that was a challenge it was a hard one um can i just add, add something concerning followers i've been speaking with some universities that are looking to really get involved especially in supply chain one of them is worcester polytech so I've just been kind of mm -hmm. 
advising some schools and there's a lot out there basically these schools are trying to put together curriculums and they realize the best thing to do is to get involved in actual blockchain so i think there's an opportunity to add young people who are developers and really get the word out through the universities well that'd be really cool i mean mm -hmm. you know annette if you're doing that work and if it it there would be like, you know, we have a university session or something like that for university, if that would help, you know, we can pick one of the webinar times in September or October and do something like that, if that would help. Okay. Yeah, mean. yeah. And then if you're also, if you're doing that, there's a Rutgers Business School blockchain group as well. And pre-pandemic, I was I was speaking with them regularly. They even came in one, at one time and spoke with the social impact SIG. I haven't been in touch with them so much in, in the last couple of years, but I bet that the group is still there, even though the leadership would have changed. And this might be a way to help facilitate different university blockchain groups getting to know one another. Historically, they were doing that through a lot of hackathons, mm -hmm. but we can create another avenue. The I'll send, there's a thing I'll send to you guys. There's a, a Georgetown, um, Cincinnati, and Notre Dame are doing a, kind of supply chain discussion on the 20th where they want to um they want it's they want to create a kind of consortium with the universities mm -hmm. and also businesses and blockchains so they're just looking for oh, people to kind of get involved so i can kind of cuz uh, i work with the university of cincinnati their blockchain guy at this group called infraguard so these okay. three universities are getting together so i'll send you the invite anyone can attend they're going to oh, have good. an uh, in event, uh, in-person event in Chicago, but anyone can attend online and they just, they're just looking to just get as many people involved, but their focus is on supply chain. So Okay. Great. Good. Thank you so much. Thanks, I'll, I'll share that with the Rutgers folk. And, and Ned, um, the other thing, you might want to look at uh, University of Arkansas because they're, they're really prominent yeah. in the book. You, you already figured that oh, one yeah, out. Oh, yeah. 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 They... Uh, well, you know, the funny thing about University of Arkansas is that uh, they are huge in the blockchain. Uh, Professor Mary Lacity is is all over supply chain, blockchain, use cases, things like that. Uh, the school is the Sam Walton School and, you know, Walmart and blockchain. And it's almost like they're, they're teaching people about blockchain so that they can go and work at Walmart. And also a lot of them are working at Arvest Bank, which is a Walmart bank. And our vest worked with them. They are all about blockchain too. So yeah, it's you know it's Walmart, our vest, University of Arkansas, you know blockchain. So yeah, they're uh, yeah they're they'd be a great one to get involved too. So yeah, they would. Love okay, them. good, good. So you, I'm glad you're already plugged in and already found those kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you one more. It's it's an older study, Auburn RFID Lab. Uh, you okay. can look it up. If you can't find it, just yeah. ping me. They did uh, um, some work with Hyperledger two, three years ago and produced a nice report out of that. Uh, unfortunately, it, uh, the progress with the works stalled out for more technical reasons, in this case, actually, or practical reasons as opposed to desire. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Some of the programs are really advanced. Some are just kind of startups they're just starting so yeah but it's all the schools are there's a, a huge want for knowledge so yeah so now this is a consortium of universities you're saying yes um, so this one on the 20th i'll send you that's it's notre dame cincinnati and um georgetown that are running the event and they're looking for businesses to get involved and blockchains to get involved and just kind of bring a bunch of ideas but the uh, emphasis is on supply chain so yeah. the meeting is where did you say it's in chicago it's in chicago yeah oh okay in person, uh, i'm so, I'm sorry i'm sorry it's in cincinnati so oh, okay cincinnati. yeah the university of cincinnati is running it so yeah if you're uh, i don't know where you live but if you're in cincinnati you can go to it so it's open to all so okay no i'm, I'm in chicago Suburbs, you, got, so. you got two Chicago yeah, yeah, guys here, uh, Ned, Jeff, and uh, myself. <laughs> so um, Purdue has a good blockchain uh, group. Um, Professor Black runs that at Purdue University, and they're all, always doing events, things like that. So um, he's he's uh, got a great program there. So okay, wow, I haven't heard much yeah. from Purdue, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, good. no, he's well, let uh, me get this. yeah. Let's let's see where let's see where we can go, Ned. And you know, we, okay. we can, you know, because yeah. after we finish this ebook, 
we're going to be we're going to be looking for what's the next way that we're going to add value beyond you know I jokingly call it webinar factory you know yeah we can do webinars and we're going to do webinars and we yeah. should do webinars but we don't want that to be our main reason for existence there so okay um, let's flip over here. Uh, so as Alicia mentioned, let's talk about status ebook and use our remaining time to talk about this and what's next, et cetera, et cetera, uh, here. So as Alicia mentioned, 31 plus companies considered. Uh, you know, we, we really, I bet you we probably had more like 50-ish or so because we had a lot of people who, when we laid out the criteria, you have to use a hyperledger project in some way, shape or form. It has to be in production. And you need to have some numerics that you can publicly share, you know, on it. There's a lot of people who, uh, you know, they dropped out on it. So uh, we have these 14 here. Uh, Jeff, I guess I'd like to, and also before I turn it over to you, Jeff, um, we've just in the last week, we got one Dubai Customs. We got one from uh, Go Ledger from was it Brazil, I think. And then we got mm -hmm. a number yeah. from okay. our friends at Oracle, which I'm glad they came back with on some of those kind of things. So we're going to have to figure those out. And I did, after I asked Mark at Oracle, hey, can you can you work on this? I When I was going through it this morning, I noticed he said, yeah, once we've decided on a couple of them, he, he can uh, they can help us create the, the uh, actual document there. Mm -hmm. So Jeff, you want to talk about where things are? I mean, going through all of the mm -hmm. profiles that we submitted or that have been submitted and your editing and where you think we need to go next and what help you think would be beneficial. I mean, I have some time over the next couple of weeks here that I can dive in a little bit more. Ned and David, if you can, or Andrea or Alicia, you know, that we can figure out how we divide and conquer this and kind of rock and roll. So Jeff, I'll let you turn. Yeah. So first thing I'll say is actually I didn't spend a ton of time on it because of a couple of things. Once they were coming in still, and I did review a few of those uh, that um, was it Mark that sent to Oracle. I I went out and I looked at those. Um, there's the olive oil one in there. I can't remember the other ones. Um, there's a retrace the fashion industry. I think yeah, that, that one has been. We don't have any fashion, and then there's the trade finance, the Bosch secure document exchange. Bosch, when I looked, and so yeah, um, those two. I didn't see numbers no anywhere yet. Um, I tried mm. digging through them. Uh, off, you know, he had the link, and then I went out and started searching the internet because I don't have any contacts with those companies to find out what value they pulled out of it so far. Like, um, in, in, mm -hmm. um. Yeah, that, so let me let me back up. So yeah, I started editing, editing a little bit, but one thing I did do, and I don't know if you saw them, is I was looking at my, so I have a couple of questions actually. One is um, the template we're using right now, is that gonna be the one that we that people see that we publish in some no. form, whether it's on the internet or so forth, or does it get converted over into something else? Like that GSBN one looks like somebody, even though there's no finances on it, um, it's, I wasn't sure, I didn't want to do a whole bunch of work and have to un, 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 uh, unravel it. So what I did on mine actually is I made some, you know, I just did this on my entries. I changed it to where something I'm used to doing maybe in industry was, um, I can't pull one up, but I changed it to what, what was the project goal and it, and it states the business case and then it, it states who, who did it, who did the work, the company, the role. And then also right up top, it shows the value they got out in dollars. Um, and then underneath is the project and describes, you know, fabric and so on and so forth in there. I just changed the format of mine. Um, so you'll see two out there on some. Which one should I look at? Uh, the, always the bottom. So uh, Vertrax, look at the second one. Yeah, not that. Um, oh, this, <laughs> not this one? <laughs> no, not that one. You know, they, come okay. up, they come up funny, but um, if you pick up the second one, let me uh see. Maybe oh, yeah, you, you want to click right instead of you clicking left. Yeah, unfortunately, that's where uh, all of you are showing right now, and it's not letting me move 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 everybody. <laughs> there we go. 
This is the one you want? Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah, and it's hard there. to read. But I have the. I kind of looked at it from a thought standpoint of uh, what was what was uh, why do this? What was their objective to do this? The company or the vendor? And um, then I put the benefits right up front, and then I talked about the project underneath. And I made just those changes because I was finding it easier in my sense to read these. And I went through a, a number of the profiles that are out there, and um, a lot of it is whether it's the finances or the project well, it's all under the description. And so mm -hmm. I wasn't sure, um, I guess you guys would know, is this something that people are going to look at and see what rate this thing here? Or is this just a template for us? Because some of them is you got to go down a bit to see what was the financial benefit? Why did they do this? Um, yes. Right. So I, so I changed the format and I thought maybe some people make a comment on the format on this template. Um, and so I just edited mine. I cleaned up some of the project description a bit. And I cleaned up the project description. Um, I think one from, <laughs> go back to my directory and look. I changed some of the wording around that. It, um, I haven't posted it because I want to tell that person I edited it first. But you want to stick with the old profile again. Is this, I wasn't sure what this, what we're looking at the screen is going okay. to be. Is this something just for our internal use or is this going to get the content picked up, put into some other template the, um the gsbn i can i can go into the back one a little bit the gsbn profile is the template that daniela and tomas gave us okay and one of one of our concerns or my concerns was that if we just put it like that people are going to come at it with a wide range of i can just put in whatever i want mm -hmm. so i created that other template and if you look at the template it's got bullet points of information we're looking for right i will say that in reading some of the proposals not i think a lot of people just cut it out and put in whatever they wanted anyway so there is nothing about benefits whether that be dollars or steps saved for a process or time savings mm -hmm. um because any any of those three things could be a type of benefit yeah. where whereas some people didn't put anything about that it was and i'm still seeing a lot of you know what the goal of a project is even though bullets specific the bullets in the template um specifically asked for you know realized goals so this one here benefits. so alicia you built this one that's here that we're looking so at so the one that we're looking at right now is one that daniela and tomas did okay Okay. Just also, we're not going to be able to get quotes from everybody. And I think right. if everyone felt they had to have quotes, that was going to be really intimidating. So I wanted to create a template that was going to be a bit less intimidating and gave more structure around the type of information to include. You're talking about the one we're Does using that make now. Sense? Yeah, the one we're using now, I think, is superior to this. This is my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank because you. Because this takes a lot of reading. You know, even if we had an, it, the blue box, it makes it look whatever, but underneath that diagram can be confusing to a lot of people. So I look at the ebook template as more of a non-technical description of business benefit using blockchains for supply chain. And this piece down at the bottom with the boxes and so forth can apply to a lot of stuff. But, um, you know, it's, it's I'm just used to, um, in my other role for years, dealing with management is they really like to see what are you doing and what do we get out of it right off the top? Um, yeah, this. And, uh, yeah. and and what do we get out of this right off the top? I mean, oh, okay. You can pique their interest right away. And then, they, yeah. then they're interested in what, what did we do here to get this? So this is really neat. But they want these numbers thrown out. Decision makers like to see yeah. uh, what, what, what are we trying to do? Oh, I see. Oh, we got this benefit. Out. Really? What did you guys detail yeah. do? And then you leave it down. So that yeah. was just my input on it. But I like this much more. Than the yeah. GS, GSPN it, it, and, whatever. And Jeff, yeah, maybe you. to take pull the thread a little bit further, I was not thinking that this would be what our ebook. You know, we would just take this directly, you know, with the formatting fixed up, mm -hmm. and then we publish it. I was not thinking that. I was thinking that no. we would take this information and the uh, the hyperledger folks would use some of their marketing dollars to create a prettier view of this information. But okay. it has the information just like we've been talking about, mm -hmm. as opposed to right. you know, like this GSBN one, 
where not, you know, now I'm looking at it. There, there's no number in here that says, oh, by using GSPN, we were able to save, you know, $20 million or we were able to cut cycle time by 10%, you know, on, on used by using electronic bill of ladings. There's, yeah. there's none of that in this. We, mm -hmm. we want that kind of stuff. So we're going to have to go back to these GSPN folks and get that information. Yeah. So, um, well, we could even okay. ask Daniela and Tomas since they created add, yeah. this one if they yeah. have that data. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And I probably think... saw my, my follow up email to somebody this morning asking that they put what they sent via email into the template and upload it to the site because people are, you know, sending essays. And it's <laughs> yes, not having right. the information that that we've asked for. So we're not able, if we don't have that information on what are the benefits, then what's the benefit to somebody reading about it? Why do we want to take up space in the ebook with a profile that doesn't show the benefits of using the tech? Right. Yeah. And even um, like ESG has become critical in a lot of companies. I actually talked to British Petroleum about ESG um, and another company about ESG. It reminds me of the days when I was working on the EPA's uh, reform and gasoline program for the government. I, I was working for oil company, but um, the companies get these mandates like ESG saying, you have to do this. And so they look at it and go, we have to do this. What's the best way to do this? They're not looking, sitting back and going, oh, should we do this? Yeah. Is it worth the capital expense and return? It's like, oh God, we have to do this. And so how do we do this, folks? Let's let's get out there and put something together or get pick up some technology that we can meet this need. So ESG is becoming, I think, well, I should become it is a really big deal. Um I think the companies are doing it, they're just trying to figure out how they can leverage ESG. <laughs> yeah. Was it Walmart? I think that when they first started talking about something to do with uh, renewable energy or energy efficiency, they soon realized that it wasn't just good publicity, but they were saving money yeah. by by doing things differently that were more sustainable. It's not just a matter of sustainability. It's also a matter of financial savings. UPS, by only doing right turns, by not doing left turns, saved money. Yeah. They, they saved petrol mm -hmm. as well as time. Yeah. So, so on the ESG thing, if we can if we can do it from this is Tom's opinion here. I can be voted off the island here if you want, but uh, <laughs> I, I unless the ESG thing has some numeric benefits to it, I, I'd rather downplay that. I mean, we got enough challenges with blockchain and people believing right. it and all that to mm -hmm. add in ESG and add another layer of you know, unfortunately it's a big discussion topic on the, on the negative and the positive right now with ESG. And we don't, we yeah. don't need to wait. I don't want to wait. I, I'd rather us not wade into that. At I was this just wondering if we time. wanted one example of it. In the, in the if we, portfolio. if we have one example, that would be awesome. But it might not have numbers. Um, yeah. I think if yeah. there's something that, that has an ESG benefit that, you know, save this much petrol, well, petrol savings also have, yeah. uh, dollar savings yes if, yeah yes exactly or that. reduce this reduce chemical use by this much that's going to have a big impact in human health yeah so yeah. the financial guy at bp told me about esg and he said one of the things about esg and again this is at a very high level is if you want to talk about esg he said we have you know global investors massive billion uh, people that own billions of dollars of stock pension funds and so forth and a company like blackrock which i think is the biggest um investor in companies around the world i guess this blackrock they have a social agenda and if you don't meet that they will eat they will pound your stock price and so again that's a big big level so like bp we have esg programs because we think it's good but also we want to maintain our stock price yeah otherwise a big investment firms will pull out because some of the contributors are saying are you buying stocks and companies that are hurting the environment so there's a lot going on up there and he said no we have to have an esg black rock and so our institu institutional investors that's the word i'm looking for yeah. demand it yeah. of our board Stephen and schwarzman so, does a lot of impact work in different ways yeah he actually but created anyway. a major global leadership program at yeah, at yeah. so so let's let's so guess, treat that, let's just treat that as as one 
you know, kind of our diversity, right? Where we're trying to find geographical diversity, we're trying to find use case diversity, et cetera. If we can find yeah. one that has, we can pull that thread, beautiful. Let's let's do that. Um, so I guess my question I have on the further on the editing is, um, do you want me to just go through the templates out there now? I, I've done some others I have on my C drive. I haven't put them out there that I didn't write up that I changed. Um, and just re-edit some of just I it's just a second read. Uh, some yes. of the punctuation, clearing yeah. the little bit of stuff up. There was a couple things around. Well, I don't the ones I had run through except for except yours, Alicia, there weren't numbers behind them. Um well, I think one thing we could yeah. do for profiles that don't have the numbers before we spend too much time copy editing, because that that takes a lot of work. We could also reach out to people who submitted them saying, we're not seeing these bullets from what we had in the template mm -hmm. of the information that was needed. Like, like to Dubai Customs one that came in two days ago, yesterday. Yeah. Right, I looked at that one. Yeah, yeah. There, was, there was no yeah. numerics in that. So there were no numeric values. Yeah, so we need to go back um, to them. And, and I guess what I'd like to do is, Jeff, you're on the right path. You know, if you can go through the ones that are there, and and say yep check it has all the meets all the criteria and mm -hmm. the wording you know you, you know it, it is 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 almost copy ready i guess is the way to think about it yeah mm -hmm. okay it Tom, is, do you want to pull up that profile sorry that template from the so scroll down to the bottom of the table okay okay at the bottom of the table there were there was a template file i think that there was a if you pull up, yep, there. So if you pull up um, either the PDF or the PowerPoint, so three to five sentences include which hyperledger they're using with the focus, the partners, stakeholder groups, geographic regions, business effects of the project. Of course, I should have put that business effects up top as the number one thing we need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was, that, that was my, you know, oh, I should... It seems so obvious, but let me just put it in anyway. Um, yeah. okay. it, it may have been obvious to us. It was it obviously it's not obvious to other people. Right. Um, and, and, I, and I think we've also, we're using the words financial benefit so, or some sort of numeric benefit. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Like the Walmart Canada thing. Okay. 70% of our loads now are not in dispute. All right. Or it used to be 70%. Now it's. One percent, less than two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So there needs to be so. So that's probably the big thing, Jeff. If they, if they don't have it, then let's call it out and let's have our list of what what's missing. Um, and then you know we can go back to each person. Okay. And, and yeah. I'm okay if you want to. I'm okay if you want to put my name down on some ones that you know I should go after. If you want to do it that way, you know, as you're going through it, all this needs it, send it my way. Okay. I you know, know my two need more in it, so I can get that. Okay. Yeah, some of it is tough to get, like the uh, Venishore, and I got some hard numbers on it, but I had to do some real work. Yeah. Because I mean, this uh, is part of why nothing moved forward on the Cap Gemini. Yeah, but I did get some good information on what that value is because uh, the, uh, the one example I use that's using the sure that Skirga just say lines. There, uh, there's they have come out and said uh, we're no we're saving tens of thousands of bottles having to be replaced from uh, somebody opens it up whether it's a wine retailer or one of these wine clubs and they have to return back something happens and so okay tens of thousands of bottles but. Those their bot their prices of wines range from when they tell me um, fifteen dollars up to three hundred fifty dollars a bottle, mm -hmm. depending on what it is. So what's the value? So, so the wine club that I go through, I've known them for years. I asked him; he deals with all these distributors. <laughs> he got he got a hold of Brigitte. Yeah, and got me a got me a number <laughs> to use for what they saved. Right. And it's that's not just sense. saving the bottles, but think about all the disgruntled customers and how that affects yeah. the customer relationships. So the number I have with them is a hard number that I got from someone who works with the wineries and got that from them. And, is that uh, something were... that they're comfortable having published publicly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
I um I think one of us it's from the, the, the wine exchange is the is the firm that deals with all these distributors okay. and everything. And uh they got a lot of specials. They had Gergich, the the people, the name the name is after, and I went to it at a tasting. <laughs> That's right. why I went to them. By the way, I was at a tasting. The Gergich folks were there. They flew in to uh, St. Charles is where the place is going on outside Chicago. So um, I got a, I got an average number to use. They could not come up and say the mean, median number we're placing for some reason is this one type. No, it's uh, here's the average price of that line. We're going to go across the spectrum. What we sell. So it's it's an it's a weighted average, actually, which is really good. Good. Okay, so let's let's take our ne next eight minutes here, and I, I think there's a couple things that one uh, we need to do. One, if Jeff, if you can take just go through the ones. I there's a group that we already have the profile, and yep. just if they're missing something, send it out. And, and if you want to be the person still on it, great. You know, if if it's Ned's or Ned, if you want to take on a couple other, you can put me on and say, hey Tom, can you follow up on this one? You know, I'm fine with that. Okay. No, I go. I, I mean, I was not twiddling my thumbs on it, but the last couple of days I've been going through and going, how can yeah, we write no, all no these things? But no worries. am I aiming for that GSBN template or are we going to keep this one? Yeah, um, yeah. Should we modify this one? Any ideas around it? I, I was like, okay, I'll change all mine. It's going to have two copies. Yeah. And then what I, I modify it. Hey, if you guys yeah. want, I can modify that template and just, you know, Take that that little line about um, business effects and and put numeric business benefits and make that the number one, the top bullet. Okay. And repost that, and then we can share that with people when we when we ask them to please um, yeah. edit but their. That's more than likely where sure the problem is going to be is numeric benefit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I changed the DLT labs one. I changed uh, one other one, and I actually moved the content around to look like bullet points. I didn't put bullet points on there, but I thought, okay, this belongs up here. I'm going to stick this here. I, some was kind of redundant for some reason, so I tried to make it four or five bullet points. Okay. okay. I can I can knock that out fast. Okay. Great. So so we, so we so that so thank you, Jeff, for uh, leading the charge on the 13, 14, whatever we have that we – yeah. yeah. Now we've gotten some new ones in the last week here <laughs> that we uh, need need to figure out what to do. So we got the Oracle ones from Mark, right? We got the Dubai customs. Yeah. And then really, where was yeah, the other one? It was Brazil. It was Go Ledger. I think it was Go Gas. Go, yes. Go Gas. Okay. I looked at that one a lot, and they had. Um, I'm confused. So is Go Ledger and Go Gas the same? I don't know. I, I maybe the Go, Go Ledger Gas is the one. company and Go Gas is the implementation. Don't know. Possibly because yeah. the URL that he posted to the table is www.gogas. Sorry, www.gogas.goledger.io. So it's obviously affiliated. I think Go Gas, just based on that, I would say Go Gas is a program of Go Ledger. Okay. Go gas by Go Ledger. If I click through in the link, it's Go gas by Go, Le Go Ledger. I dug around so on that Go one Ledger's a lot. Company. Yeah, couldn't find any benefit anywhere. Then he needs to do, and it, it yeah. seems like he probably works for the company, so he would have, um, he mm -hmm. would have that info. It sounds like they're doing. Oh, they're doing a presentation. They did a presentation to the Climate Action Sig on the eleventh. So on. It was actually. Um... Because I, I play, uh, I um, do some work do for Sherwood on that. I haven't done much work lately. And I, is that the one that was canceled? Because um. <laughs> Marcus sent an email, I think it was this morning, saying that they've been heads down prepping for the presentation. I think they canceled that thing on the 11th. <laughs> we never, it never went because I would oh, have no, definitely been because I just clicked through to the link for the eleventh for the meeting on the eleventh, and there's a video. There's a video link. Let me okay. put up. I'll put it in the chat right now. Maybe they changed the timers. There was some it's reason why chat. I couldn't I couldn't attend it. Um, it is now in the chat. Okay, you're celebrating a week after July Fourth, Jeff. That's why you couldn't attend it. Yeah, I have it here, and I scratched it out. Maybe because sometimes these things are uh, in the evening, Midwest time. 
No, it was 8 a.m. Pacific. So that 10 was 10. Time. And I have it written down here. And then I have canceled. It's on, on the CA2 SIG meeting. Okay. All right. Well, I'll look at it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Jeff, here's okay. what I'm thinking. Maybe just kind of divide and conquer here. If you could take the lead on the existing ones, the Dubai Customs and the Go Gas thing. Okay. Maybe Alicia and I, Matt, if you'd like to join in or Andrea, um, we can we can look through the Mark, Mark, uh, how you ever pronounce his last yeah. name? Mark R. Mark, from Oracle. Rock, Rock Milovich, it looks like. Yeah. Um, we can look through those and pick out a couple and say, hey, Mark, can you can you do this with this one? Yeah. That way, we that way we're we're not all looking at looking at them yeah. um, and duplicating just, work. In terms of just a quick look, we've already got there's a lot of track and trace out there. So as much as I always love having more food related track and trace, I think that the olive oil project would add less value than say the fashion industry, which we don't have any on or the Bosch because secure document exchange and trade finance. Um, the fashion open trade industry. blockchain could also be really interesting. Providing security and visibility across all trade documents. So I guess yeah, either... that, that is a good one indeed to, yeah. to look at. It's, so I, uh, it's basically yeah, either... because of the recent approval of the upcoming yeah. approval of the MLISA and uh, electronic trade bill in UK. So we get so it. I'd suggest we do re we ask for a retraced and either Bosch or um the open trade blockchain. Does that make sense? Yeah. I see Ned so, nodding. So um at least you said we don't have any in the fashion industry. You were saying you're looking for something in the fashion industry. Yeah I I don't recall seeing any fashion Examples in the companies we've already covered. No, and I, Am I wrong? The, I no, and I went down the road with the cosmetic companies, and I actually yeah. wrote one up, but I didn't put it out there. Yeah, because I couldn't get um, um, I can't remember who it was. I couldn't get info out of them. There was actually numbers, there was data value, but I couldn't get anybody to confirm that they're still using fabric because mm -hmm. the data was like 2018, 2019, which I've seen on some of the other ones that have come out and it's. So the ones like I, the ones that I made, I stuck around because they, there's data in 23, data in 22, and they're up and running. Um, so I know they're on fabric, but um, let me take okay. a look at the fashion industry again. Uh, what do you mean by yeah. fashion industry? Do you mean clothing? Um, or yeah, designers clothing. Or... There's a lot of issues around, um, especially in fast. Well, there's issues around. Um, track and trace to reduce fraud in high-end fashion, but oh, then there's yes. issues around sustainability in fashion. The Everledger. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, retraced, they, yeah. the one that Mark, uh, the link that Mark put up for retrace, retrace to place sustainability platform on OCI and blockchain improved sales by 400. Um, That's a nice consumers number. Consumers are demanding that, yeah, by four by 400%. Um, so okay. it's got a number in there already, just that one link. I'd like to see more than one resource for each of these things, especially if the resource used is on the company's website, yeah. because company's website can publish whatever they want. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I was very close to making revisit it. The, the LM, or I'm, I'm going to be sexist here and ask Felicia what this is, LMVH. It is a consortium of cosmetic companies. L is L'Oreal. M is um, I don't know. No, it's Louis. V it's M. Louis Vuitton. Moet. Yeah. Hennessy is what LVMH. Louis Vuitton. Moet. Hennessy. Moet. Hennessy. Okay. Yeah. Um, you say, you say it better, Alicia, than I say it. Sorry. <laughs> They're a consortium of cosmetic companies that have done things around supply chain, also around fraud, and they've also got into. Uh, and which which one one of them was showing how to use blockchain and cosmetics for supply chain with yeah. NFTs with a lipstick right. that was I was all over the internet and a lipstick they couldn't they're be not sold out to and I yeah. remember there's I often find a out lot of they were on fabric press. yeah let, 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 yeah just I mean we're at the top of the hour here so let me just oh, kind okay. of come back on this let let's let's uh, let's deal with what Mark has here 
and figure okay. out which ones we want to ask of him. I think you're right on, on Alicia, you know, we got to ask him for additional sources of information. Yeah. So right I'll come, I'll, theirs. yeah, I'll um, ask for retrace, Bosch and open trade. Um, and I'll, I'll suggest like either Bosch or open trade, though. I think having a Singapore example would be good because we haven't had a lot of sing and um, especially more. Yeah. Um, more Andrea, resources. do you do you want one of those more than the other, Bosch or Open Trade? Open Trade would be perfect. Also, Bosch okay. makes sense. So I'll I'll Maybe. suggest for Trace and Open Trade. Before yeah. I respond to him, I'm gonna make those edits to the template to move, you know, numeric benefits, mm -hmm. financial or time savings, um, to to the template and moving it to the top bullet. And I'll repost that so that we can send people back to that as a this as a resource yeah. on this is the information we want the profiles to have. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. And then I'll I'll let you all know. I'll I'll post something. You guys okay. all know. And now on the stuff with Mark has up at the top here. Um mm -hmm. I, despite what he says about Ever Everledger, I'd rather us not include Everledger at this point in time. There's yeah. too much. And he's saying too much there's food. a reorg, but, but, but we need resources. I can't find any. Yeah, let, let's let's leave Everledger off. Cool, cool that they're they're still going around, blah, 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 but let's not leave them there. Uh this GSBN thing. So we so you know, this this looks like a place where maybe there's more details, right? So he's helping right. us out here, which is great. Um in circular, we can include this one. Here. Yeah, like I did that one. Yeah. You may not have seen it out there, but there is circular out there. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, that that's yeah. great that we have that. Perfect. I think he had. Did he have one other? Um, one other thing he added. Oh, and Volvo Group Longevity. Uh, does anybody, anybody have a chance to look at this? No. No, that one I well, looked at. In I the, actually know the guy who was working on his name is Troy Norcross. Mm -hmm. So I could I could reach out to him to find out more if we want to have that be part. Because I couldn't find a lot aside from on just their website. But mm -hmm. I actually connected with him on LinkedIn, was asking him about it. Um, I heard him speak on a webinar. So if we okay. want to do that, he's really like outgoing, really friendly guy. So if we want to have that included. I could probably get some information from him. Great. Well, that would be, great. Else, be great to get a good it, auto industry example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe Ned, ask him if he wants to cut, you know, find out a little bit more. And how I've yeah. kind of been doing this myself is hey, if, if they got numbers and they got a great story and blah, 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 you know, we've saved millions of dollars with this, beautiful. And then they could be ebook material. If not, hey, would you like to come present on a, you know, as it was a webinar? sometime in September, October, right? Okay. So that way there's still an opportunity for them, to, for us to work together with them. It's just, you know, we don't, we don't want them just, oh, well, no, you're not far enough along to so go away. We don't want, we don't like you. <laughs> Cause that's not what okay, we Okay, no, I like that idea. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, as I'm looking at the website, I don't really see anything numbers wise. I mean, administrative efficiency, yeah. maybe, maybe they got 20 customers that are using this thing and they can say great things, but that's not, what the website's saying. Okay. I'm wondering if, if maybe Volvo is just hiding a lot, just, you know, keeping it to themselves. So. And, and that could be very, that could, that could definitely be true. Okay. So Ned, you're going to do longevity. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Oracle. Did we already have a plastics related one? I think, I think we did. Cause he, he had also he suggested. Did, he did have Siebel. a plastics related one Yeah. Um, here. Let me go back to the emails. But and, I think we had, Something in the table was plastics related already. I forget if if a profile was actually created for that one though. I think this is this is from you. Uh, too much mark stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, this keep sea blue recycle plastics. Yeah. I don't remember if we did. Jeff, do you remember if we have another recycle plastic one? I don't think we do. I don't think so. Um, I saw. I actually I, I saw this web page. I was reading it. Um, I it, it just it's all the web pages you can see is driven really a lot around sustainability. It's about 
cleaning up the oceans and so forth. I went through it's those. Not, it's a nice story, anyway. but I, I don't, I don't see numbers. any numbers that say, okay, yeah. because we had this blockchain, we use blockchain, we were able to, you know, save, get, keep 20, right. 20 million pounds of ocean plastics out, or we were able to harvest these number of microplastics out there. Yeah, then if they if they have, then what's their value they're putting on it, or is it an ESG thing um, the company is trying to hit? So it's kind of one of those things where you read it and then you're trying to get a feeling about it. Is this going to have hard numbers behind it? <clears throat> um, or is this something that, you know, you drop in front of a company, like some of them that we have, you drop in front of a company that's not using blockchain technology, go, why aren't you doing this? Do your shareholders know you're not doing this? <laughs> How much money's been saved? And so, yeah, yeah so I've been... That, those are the great ones. I think we have, a, if we have an ebook where we have examples of use cases and if somebody who's not doing that, you got to look at the company and go, there's a, must be a, you better have a reason why you're not doing this because you're costing yeah. us money. Um, well, here's the results, but there's, there's a number there, 150 ton, but they're already collecting that. So what does blockchain do that makes it better? Right. Right. Um, they collect 175 tons because they're using blockchain or, you know, as, now, because previously they collected 150 tons and 100 tons of it went back into landfill because it wasn't <laughs> recyclable grade, right? Now using blockchain, now that's yeah, reduced. So the, yeah, so it does say uh, it's a traceability and transparency promise, which blockchain is known for. Um, but uh, yeah. Here, here's what I'm thinking, Alicia. Maybe go mm -hmm. back on you know this numeric. Hey, we look, thanks, Mark blah, blah, blah. Here's the ones we're thinking if the numbers are strong on it. How's that? Okay. Yeah. That way, Mark, can this tell, one looks he's going to know these better than we, we do. And yeah. here's the ones we like. And we really are looking for some solid numbers on it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just, yeah. Blockchain is, yeah. is good for traceability and immutability and transparency. But I look at this and there's, there's no reason to think that there's not the possibility that this actually costs them more yeah. by doing this, but they're doing it for ESG reasons. Yeah. yeah. Mark, which one of these have the best? We really like the trade finance story, right? You know, one of those two, we really want that. I think you said the fashion or the plastic thing, you know, which one has yeah. better numbers? I just look back through the table and, and remember when we were still doing a bulleted list of potential projects, there was yeah. Recycle Go and Deep Dive Technology Group. There's a link because they are using Hyperledger, but it's from August, 2020. And it's it's they're going to do this. And I think we weren't <laughs> yeah, able no. to, yeah. we weren't able to find any numbers of this was created and what of the business. So this is a little bit more recent here, January 14, yeah. 2022, yeah. you know, and, and I, <laughs> so, so at least we got some hope here that uh, it's still yeah. real and they're getting some value and maybe they've, they've gotten a little bit further along a, a year and a half later. Yeah. Um, yeah. We, the, we almost had a pharma, but, um, I did a whole thing on that company, <laughs> Metal Ledger. They saved billions, documented billions using blockchain. And they were on Hyperledger Fabric. And then they mm -hmm. outsourced the support and they migrated to uh, Polkadot or something. But it's one of those things where uh, I think Danielle was on a call where I said, you know, sometimes on these values, <laughs> Hyperledger Fabric enabled them to put the thing up initially to do the proof of concept. They get it working. They were running it and they just happened to move support and they move the data over and that was yeah. that's the benefit that Hyperledger. So that's not how you look at it. Is Hyperledger should get credit for that whole thing because Pfizer's using it, AstraZeneca is using it. They're saving a fortune on this. And there's a write up I did on it for a website. Um, and um, the company that's supporting it, I can't remember their name, told me about all this. And so if she gave me the detail and the numbers, like, wow, this would have been great for the ebook. Yeah. We just have to say, they were using hyper. They did, they did this all on Hyperledger. Well, that's and, good. Um, Maybe not for the ebook, but it could be really interesting just to know what have been the benefits and the drawbacks of moving to Polkadot. Yeah, and I asked her, and she said that's because that's the, the blockchain the support group was was familiar with, Got and it. they were able to easily move the data over. I shouldn't say easily, but they were able to move it over, and, and so whatever. Who knows. It's one of those things where Fabric doesn't get the credit, but they could turn around and give it to somebody else. The polka dot is actually what they claims it is, and they could easily move it back to Fabric. 
a year from now okay. they're oh they're using fabric again <laughs> okay well, let's let's anyway. uh, I I need to get ready for my next call here in 20 minutes or 19 okay. minutes here so um so I think we got a plan here Jeff you're gonna yep. go through here dish out as appropriate if to uh um okay. to us here on the yeah. call I'll, I'll say it that way right you know, yeah, I'll, you, I'll really you modify to... it with bullet points, like and I'll wait for an Alicia to move yeah, in. I'll, and, and I'll just do I'll get that up in the next it. couple of hours, okay. the edits yeah. to the to the template. Okay, okay thanks. good. And then we have um so so I'm hoping by next week, you know, by the next call at the end of July, we got it, we got our basically we got our 10 that we're gonna do. And then during the month of August, hopefully then we can have hyperledger folks put it in pretty format template etc yeah. and then we got to write some words around it saying hey here's what our sig's about and you know come join us blah 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 you know that kind of stuff and then if there's something else one suggestion that came up on monday um, from somebody is especially because in supply chain there's been some failures kind of along what you were talking about you know why they moved to polka dot you know okay well because they're familiar with it but there's been some big failures, right, in supply chain with trade lens. And, you know, so mm -hmm. there might be a space in our document to talk about the counterfactuals or the anti-use case. <laughs> Here's what didn't work. I, I And so it was a good suggestion. We can think about it. I think it's worth a cup, maybe a paragraph or two. But, you know, it's almost yeah. like we're acknowledging reality. However... Here's some ones that have made it work successfully for them. Yeah, it's a new technology. That's going to happen. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So so uh, so 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 that so basically, next two weeks. Let's see if we can get this down. We know the ones we got. We got the format, or we got this little uh, this template right filled out for the ones, and we got all the data that we believe necessary to then write the actual doc. Is is the goal here? Good. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. Great. So, so uh, I, Jeff, you can you can be ruthless in farming this stuff out. <laughs> well, <laughs> I won't be ruthless, but um, yeah, no, you know what yeah, I mean. This you know is, what I mean? No, this yeah. is good. This gives me something to do. Good, good, and you know, and, and <laughs> um, so hopefully, then we come back together in two weeks. We got our list. And then I'll ask Tomas yeah. to join on and we can figure out what they can do during uh, the month of August, you know, and I, and I'm working during August. Andrea, are you going to the beach in August? Sometimes, but um, just for the, for the afternoon. So, okay. So I'll you're not making sure off or anything. Okay. No, good. no, not at all. Okay. I'm so we'll all be around somehow in August and we can keep this ball rolling. We just won't have formal meetings. Here. Okay. Yeah. Because I'll send stuff to Andrea because we're planning, we're going to Italy, but not in August. <laughs> there Why you are go. You coming, Jeff. When? Well, now uh, we're looking at uh, early next year, but we've narrowed it down to Tuscany. So we like so you're coming to Tuscany in winter. Well, uh, more like uh, March. Oh, that's the right decision. March, April. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So it's getting late now and the airfare is really wacky. So um it's, it's kind of weird. But anyway, I'll ping you on where to go there. Um there's a I'm gonna stop who... recording folks here. Okay. 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 Friend of mine that's from, for, uh, a lot of Italian, so 